All right, coaches, my name is Joe Daniel from JoeDanielFootball.com and the Football Coaching Podcast. And today, I want to get on here on YouTube Live for the first time, try it out, see what happens, and talk to you about the six technique defensive end. So this was the topic in Football Coaching Podcast, episode 201, which you can check out on iTunes anytime. Uh, and in that episode, we talked about how you use the six tech defensive end not only just some of the technique, we get into the reasons why, we get into whether or not this is the right guy for you, uh, whether or not this is the right technique for you to play. We're using this in our 4-2-5 defense system and also our 3-4 defense system because they're very closely related. So if you take a look at, um, if you are a member of JoeDanielFootball.com and you're in the 4-2-5 defense system, you'll see that. What I want to get for you here tonight uh, is I want to talk about some of the, uh, I want to show you some visual uh, on the blackboard of what it looks like with what we're trying to do with the six technique defensive end. Talk a little bit about that technique, how we might drill that technique. So these two are going to kind of accompany each other. Um, I don't know how great the sound is going to be because the one thing I didn't think through coming into this was that uh, I don't have enough USB ports for my microphone. So hopefully the sound is okay and I already ordered a uh, USB hub to, to get that in there. But other than that, we're going to roll. Uh, there is a uh, chat box down there, I think, and you can tell me uh, a little bit about where you're from, what level you coach. Just give us an idea of who all is going to be here with us. Uh, and that'll be very cool. And we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to switch over here to the Blackboard. Uh, and we'll take a look here. Uh, and that's not the Blackboard. That is... There we go. All right. Okay. So we're on the Blackboard here. Um, and this is, guys always ask what I'm using here. This is just PowerPoint. It's nothing, um, nothing particularly exciting. Uh, and I'll try to get a little better picture here. Uh, this is just PowerPoint that we're looking at. So it's not anything wild and crazy. Uh, and we're going to start out with just, uh, we'll play, a. Uh, Pretty standard formation that we'll look at here. Um, and draw up our 425 defense. Now, again, this is a technique that we'll use not only in the 425, but we'll also use it. And 425 and 44 are the same. So if you're not familiar with some of the things that I do, 425 and 44 are basically the same thing, nothing major different except what we call those outside backers or overhang safeties. Um, that's really going to be the only major difference uh, in, what we, in what we're trying to do with this. So uh, we're going to have our, obviously, our six technique defensive end, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, we've got our three tech tackle. A weak shade or a two eye nose. People always ask why you like this or that. Um, I don't. Uh, we, we use them based on game plan and what we decide to do. That defensive end uh, in our 425, depending on the quality of the H back, what his abilities are, that defensive end may be in a seven on the H back, or he may be uh, in a five on the defensive ta or offensive tackle. If that's a tight end on the ball, then he's going to be in a seven technique inside shade. And I will talk about those techniques in just a minute. Okay. And guys, as you come in, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell me what level you coach at, where, uh, where you coach, what level you coach. And we'll just be in a standard cover three for right now. This really doesn't have anything to do with our six tech end. We run cover three quarters. Um, we will run some uh, cover three quarters. Uh, um, robber. We will run a little, um, a lot of cover one. I really like cover one as well. So in, in the 425 defense system, we teach a split field. Uh, we teach everything that that there is basically, and uh, it really doesn't matter, you know, what you run as far as your coverage. So we're looking at this defensive end here, six technique, just so everybody's on the same page. Uh, two uh, zero is head up on the center for us. This is I don't know if universal or not. Zero is head up on the center. Two is head up on the tack on the guard. Four is head up on the tackle. Six is head up on the tight end. Um, we use odd numbers for outside shades, so that would be a one, a three, a five, and a nine. Uh, and it's the same to both sides, so mirrors both sides. 
Uh, and then we just tag an I onto it to mean inside shade. So a 2I is inside shade of the guard. Obviously, there's no inside shade of the center. 2I is inside shade of the guard. Um, a 4I is inside shade of the tackle. And a 6I is inside shade of the tight end. Now, the way that I learned it when I was growing up, like a lot of you guys probably did, was that the 7 technique is inside shade of the tight end. So I tend to drift back and forth between the two and call it a 7 and call it a 6I, and that's just me. Um, neither one's right or wrong, I don't think. Uh, and then, uh, but we're going to be talking about the six set. So, in a four four and a four two five, a lot of people will play a seven inside shade because your defensive end in the four four, four two five, or the six two, your defensive end, or in the six two, you might call your, you might call them a tackle, and the inside guys guards or whatever knows um, that that guy is going to be your. Um, C-gap defender for the most part. Maybe not always, but for the most part, your C-gap defender. You might run some different stunts and things to get in different places. But So most people, or a lot of coaches, will run a 7 technique, playing inside shade of the tight end. Um, I do that if our guy is not very good. Um, or I would say if he's just average. If he's just average, he's the guy that we've got... Um, that's what I'm probably going to do with him. Uh, or with our young guys, like our JV, our freshmen especially, uh, will probably play with a seven technique inside shade. So if you're working at a youth level, um, the six tech might not be the best thing for you unless you got a guy that's a stud and can handle it um, because it does involve a lot more teaching. Some guys ask, well, why don't you play a five technique because he's in the C gap. And, and the key here is he's got to handle the C gap. I don't play a five technique because he's too vulnerable to down block by the tight end. Um, it's too easy to just collapse him down. Only time I play a five technique is if we were in an under front where I had a nine outside shade of the tight end uh, to make sure that he doesn't just get a clean down block on. Um, we do play a nine technique in the four three defense, but that's because we have three linebackers inside and he's responsible for D gap, not C gap. So that's just a difference in who's responsible for what. Um, so let's look at, and thanks for uh, Coach A. Uh, thanks for introducing yourself there and anybody else. Uh, tell us where you're from, what level you coach as you come in, uh, and we're going to be talking about this. And also, guys, uh, like and share this. We really appreciate a share out on social media for it uh, to get some more coaches uh, aware of what we're doing. So, All right, so let's talk about this six technique. Why do we like the six technique defensive end? And I will switch over to a yellow pen here. So again, our defensive end is going to be the uh, C-gap player. So what we're going to have him do is attack and strike the uh, tight end. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. But as he does that, his eyes are going to be looking inside at the tackle. So he has a pressure key from the tight end. He has a visual key on the hip of the tackle. Okay, So he has a pressure key on the tight end. He has a visual key on the hip of the tackle. If he feels the pressure from that tight end, base blocking him, scooping him, um, or a hard reach, not like the you know running reach that you get on a lot of stretch blocking now, but just that simple reach block that you might get uh, out of teams that aren't so much of a zone type concept where it's just a base reach. If he feels that pressure right now, then you know he's not uh, worried about what the visual key does. You've got to beat the man in front of you. Okay. If he doesn't feel that pressure, okay, where he gets some kind of an arc release, all right, um, these are the things that your seven technique is really going to have a problem with if he's not able to see his visual key because as he goes to strike with the seven and that guy goes out, he slides out, and now he's vulnerable to getting kicked out. Um, say it was a, you know, a, a pin and pull, something like that, or a uh, maybe they brought the H in motion like we do on power. If this guy doesn't have his pressure key, then he's chasing that Y out here, and he's getting kicked out. Uh, excuse me, his visual key. But as his pressure key leaves, his eyes are looking at the hip of the tackle. Well, if the tackle blocks down, and thanks for introducing yourself, guys. Uh, King Jason, old coach Crane, Thomas Simonis. And Ryan Leonard, thank you for introducing yourselves, guys. If you are just stepping in, tell me where you're from, what level you coach, and also please like and share down below. So 
if your defensive end was playing in a seven and that guy went out and he's not working a pressure and a visual key, it's very easy to influence him and make him an easy kick-out block. We think that by playing the six technique where I'm getting a clean strike on him head up, basically, uh, we'll talk, it's not quite head up, we'll talk in a minute, uh, getting a clean strike on him that I can read my visual key better. And so as he strikes and that Y releases, he sees the visual key go down and he can now squeeze to spill C gap. Okay, he can now do a better job of squeezing to spill C gap. And that's what's really important on this. And then we're gonna force a log by that kick out, force the ball to spill. Uh, and we've got our umbrella out here where he will be spilling this ball to our force defender with our free safety running the alley. And if you're not familiar with that, um, Definitely check out, uh, I've got a, a free video you can check out on the umbrella principle that is at 425defense.com slash podcast that I mentioned in football coaching podcast episode 201. And this uh, is the same thing I'm talking about in the podcast episode 201. So check that out if you, if you um, want to know more about the six technique defense event. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for Coach Hadley, Coach Smith, uh, Brad. Thanks for introducing yourselves, guys. Let's go ahead and take a deeper look. And again, if you have questions, you can put them into the chat box there, and I'll talk about them more, especially at the end. Um, we're going to go ahead and erase our pen here. And in fact, I'm going to move to a blank screen. Where we're going to focus in more on this six-tech defensive end. So we've got our tight end, okay? Or why? And I've got a defensive end playing head up on him. When we drill this, when we drill this, Pop Warner, we're teaching to play a seven tech. We're not using a six tech with youth kids. That's um, that's we can talk about the seven tech later. Uh, but um, just so that everybody knows, when I'm talking six technique, we're talking more um, more high school related. Um, because I think it's a hard technique to play. So, our defensive end head up on the tight end. All right, so three things basically that this guy can do now. Uh, he can either down block, okay? If he down blocks, we're going to squeeze the crap out of it, okay? So that guy down blocks, I'm going to squeeze him, uh, and I'll add in our pressure key, which won't matter on the down block. But if I squeeze this, whether he is on a drag release, okay, he could be on a drag release there, or he could be uh, potentially on a uh, trying to come down to an inside linebacker on like power or something like that. Uh, he's going to be squeezing that guy down, and what that will do is allow him to be in position as we get the down block on our three technique. We'd have a three technique tackling here to squeeze this down, keep our linebacker clean, and then he's going to be able to spill the kick out block by staying tight to that tackle. We want to spill that, get underneath it, and spill it to the outside. So that's the key here on playing that down block, okay? The next thing that he can get is a base block, and anything really, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, at him, it could be a scoop, it could be a base, but he's going to be striking, extending that arm, and trying to rip to the inside because his main responsibility is C gap. Okay, his main responsibility is C gap, and I'm going to show you how we work strike point in just a minute because that's what's going to get him uh, into that position. The third big thing that can happen to him here is that he gets some sort of an outside release, an arc release. Okay, maybe a reach from that tight end. This is where the visual key comes in. As he goes to strike that guy, his eyes are looking at the hip of the tackle. That hip does one of two things, okay? And again, we've narrowed this down. And actually, I guess, I suppose we could add a third thing in here while we're here, okay? We've narrowed this down to basically five possibilities for your defensive end. And people say, well, how do I drill this? What do I do with this? You do this all day long. If you're gonna run a six technique defensive end, he does this all day long. He lines up on a tight end with a tackle inside of him. He strikes the tight end, the tight end down blocks. Boom, squeeze. Okay. He strikes the tight end, the tight end base blocks. Boom, extend, rip off to the inside. 
He goes to strike the tight end. The tight end arc releases. Visual key. Okay? Visual key. Visual, what's the visual key doing? Three things the visual key can do. If the visual key also comes to him, then he will continue to fight the reach. Okay? Or continue to expand. So when he continues to expand, he's getting what? Stretch. Sweet. Outside run play. So if he gets the visual pressure key going outside of him, visual key coming at him, it's an outside run play. This is where the six technique defensive end has the advantage. Nothing else that I've talked about so far is a significant advantage. We do believe that it gives him a little bit better ability to look at that pressure key because we're head up instead of playing that inside shade tilt a little bit. Um, but this is the major advantage is that on an outside run play, my six technique, head up defensive end, is not trapped in the C gap. Because if I line up a seven technique, okay, and just like Coach asked, um, uh, Coach asked about, uh, Coach Crane asked about what we do in Pop Warner, okay, what we teach, and we play him in a seven technique because the C gap is the priority. We probably don't have enough practice time to get to work on this guy playing a six technique. And so we play him in a seven, knowing that, uh, if, he wants, if this guy wants to reach him and they want to run the ball to the outside, I mean, he's reached. It's, it's a done deal. Like, he's not beating that. He's, not, he's just not going to. And that means that my linebacker has to run and become the outside player um, to the edge, and then I got my free safety. You're not in a disastrous place. But the six technique, if you've got the guy that can do it, is going to put you in a better situation where I strike, visual key goes out, and I can continue to now fight my reach, work my hips, and he's just going to work his hips in the direction of that block. So as this guy's coming out here, he's going to keep working his hips and trying to stretch that out. And what he does is extend and expand the edge, which is going to constrict the width of the alley, okay? Makes the force job easier. It makes the alley for the free safety easier, okay? So third, second thing that can happen. At my defensive end. He arcs outside, reaches outside. My eyes are on, and this takes work now because he's got to strike and eyes on tackle at the same time. He's got to know where his hands are going while at the same time seeing his visual key. Tackle goes away. Okay, Tackle comes to, I continue to fight outside for the reach. Tackle goes away. This is an influence or something where he's going to go out and kick out the strong safety, I've got to now look to strike, and I've got to scream down inside to the hip of the tackle so that I spill the kick out. Because what they'll try to do with your six tech, if he's not paying attention to his visual key and just trying to fight the tight end all day, is that tight end goes to, to release. He continues to ride outside with the tight end for no reason, and he's getting kicked out easily, getting kicked out easily by the uh, fullback or you know power or H-back or whatever it is coming to get you, or a guard, um, anything that's coming to get you, a counter be a guard. So... He's got to read that visual key to get there. Third thing that can happen to him, and I'll just put them all right here. Okay, so this is your base. He's got to beat the visual key. Okay, this is your arc. He goes away. I get blocked two. I fight the reach. Okay, I get blocked away from the visual key. I squeeze. Or I get my visual key. Setting, backing off the line. That's pass, right? Okay, so now I know that, whoops. I run out of space here. All right. So I'm getting some sort of an outside pass release and my tackle coming off the line of scrimmage. Boom, outside, pass rush right now. Get into pass rush lane. Um, and that's probably one of the hardest things. If you guys are just coming in, you can introduce yourself in the chat box. Tell me where you're from, what level you coach. Uh, we are talking six technique defensive end. And if he gets different levels from these guys, okay, different levels from them, it's pass. So he knows now to get into his pass rush lane. To me, if you're working that six technique defensive end, this is what he does all day. Um, Maybe you can get a youth guy to do this. I just don't know that you have enough practice time to really make it happen. I think you get short on the practice time after a while, especially if you got two days a week. You got you know uh, uh, you got to spend an hour on offense, an hour on defense, and, and somewhere in there get special teams in. Like, at what point are you really getting enough indie time? 
maybe you can do it. Maybe, you know, maybe with the right kid. Um, as I mentioned on the podcast, the right kid for me in high school is, and I say this knowing that it, this is not a normal kid. Um, this is the ideal world. Uh, he is like, you know, six foot plus, 220 to 240, uh, strong and can run. Uh, and those are not normal. Um, we are not going to have a kid who has all of those talents very often. Um, but when we do, that's a six technique defensive end. Um, when we don't, just because he doesn't have all of those, I've had a really good one who was about 5'10", 200, um, that was really good at it, but he was just, he was a powerful 5'10", 200 kid and a good athlete. Um, it probably could have been a, a middle backer, um, but fit this position really well for us. So you don't have to have, you know, 6'2", 280 across the defensive line to in order to run this defense by any means. Um, and I say that too, knowing that I do want a big stud at the three technique. Uh, and thanks for introducing yourself, Gideon. Um, thanks for being here. And Gideon's a good football coach, too. Um, with the uh, defensive line that we're running the 4 2 5, that three tech, big stud. That one tech, weak, weak tackle, big stud if we got him. But really, I'm going to take the next best defensive lineman and make him the, uh, especially if he's got some athleticism, I'm going to make him the strong end. I'm going to put like an athlete at the weekend. Um, and I might just use a shooter, like a wrestler type guy, uh, there in the um, in the at the nose spot. So lots of different things that you can do here. Thanks for being here, Dre. Um, lots of things that you can do with your defensive line. You don't need to have four big studs. I hear that a lot. Like I don't know if we can run this because I don't have four big studs to do it. All right. So I want to go a little bit deeper. But again, if you're going to use this technique, that's what this guy does. That that's his individual period. Um, and guys will say, well, he's going to get bored, so I'm going to have him run hoops. Why? He can run hoops. When does he run a hoop? He's trying to beat the guy in front of him. Put a hoop behind the tackle. If you want him to run a hoop. But this is the drill that he does. And he's got five things that happen. Okay? Add in a screen retrace would probably be the only other thing that I would add in there. Um, and, I mean, that's like, not to say that's all he ever does, but that's the vast majority of what he's doing here. All right, so... I do want to talk about the strike point because it's a little bit different. And what I'm going to show you here is going to be art. I think that's pretty good, actually. This is our tight end that we're looking at. Okay. Thanks for being here, Tim. All right, there we go. Tight end. Okay, when I talk strike point, ball's in here. Okay, so here's our defensive end lined up on. All right. This is our defensive end. We've got our visual key inside. I'm not going to give him a jersey. I'm just going to say our visual key is his hip. Okay, so that's our visual key right there. All right, on his hip. Ball is to our left, so we're the right side. Playing on the right side defensive end. Now, we do flip these guys. Okay, We definitely flip these guys. When I say six technique, a lot of guys think head up, straight up, head up on him. Um, you know, and that's, it's got to be straight head up. Um, we are actually playing, I don't know if it gets quite down the midline. I tell them that our strike point, um, and just so you have an idea, our strike point from a shade, is like the outside of the outside number. So if I was in a shade, my strike point would be like the top corner of that one. I wouldn't say the top corner because I would probably say the bottom corner because I want to overemphasize everything for my guys so that they are like you know lower than they need to be. So we'd be looking to strike the bottom corner of that one. Um, sometimes we say frame the armpit. I think it's a little wider than we want to be just because we're not going to get a strike on him. Um, when I say strike point, strike point is where our hands go on the snap. And defensive line is all about quick hands. Because you beat offensive linemen by getting inside control. If you get inside control on the offensive lineman right now, okay, beat him, hands close together, not here, hands close together, okay, you beat offensive linemen and get the arms extended. I want to be coming, bam, make contact with my arms, just almost locked out, lock him out right there. Now I've got position. Now I can extend, post, rip, beat the block. Right? That's that's defensive line. That's again, don't overcomplicate this thing. 
Don't need 10,000 drills. Our defensive tackle that always plays in the shade, he works block two, block away, and pass rush. Like, he's only got three things. That's why the six tech's harder. The six tech's harder because he's got five. But it's not. We're not wildly complicating football. Um, that's how you get That's how you get really slow players out there. So, we've got... I don't tell him that the strike point is the middle of the breastplate. Okay? The strike point is not the middle of the best breastplate. The strike point is the inside half or even the inside corner of the inside number. So in that case, right there. Okay? Why? Because what's our main responsibility still, even though we're playing in this in this technique, our main responsibility is still to be the uh, C gap defender. Okay? My main job is still to be the C gap defender. So no matter what I do, I'm still a little more inside conscious. Do I think that this gives you an advantage somehow in playing the C gap by strike pointing an inch over? No. But I want them to know you're still an inside, inside conscious first. Um, with the hands, I put the inside hand down. Okay? I put the inside foot back. Okay, so we're going to have inside hand down, inside foot back. Why? Because to me that means that my off hand is going to strike just slightly before my inside hand, which means which hand? My C-gap hand, the hand in the C-gap. Now, do I stress out about this? I, I wouldn't. Do you stress out about whether your guy's going to flip hands every time? Some guys are just going to be comfortable with the right hand down, and that's a deal, and that's a thing, and you know it, and he's going to put his right hand down every time, and you'll be okay. Okay. What I want, ideally, clinic talk. Not Clinic talk doesn't always translate to the field. If i got a kid who just shuts down when he puts his left hand down, he's not putting his left hand down. Okay. But he's going to put his right hand down so that when he comes off the ball, okay, he's. I feel like that – Offhand is going to get there just a second earlier. Boom, boom, and that C gap hand is going to be in control first. Tilt him a little bit, post and rip into the C gap. So it's a very slight difference, and it's not one that I'm willing to, you know, that's not the hill I'm going to die on with a kid. It's a very slight difference, but it is for coaches who really like to have specifics, and I know a lot of coaches want to know every little specific. And then you'll work it out as you go. That's how we do the specifics of it. Okay. So as we strike, we're going to end up with the inside hand here, the outside hand here. Okay. In a perfect world. Does it happen that way? Probably nine, 90 times out of 91, which would be a dumb percentage to work with. Um, 99 times out of 100, it probably doesn't look like that. But that's the idea. Okay. As he shoots the hands there, the eyes are looking at the visual key. So it's go, ball move. So we're, as I'm, I'm keying inside, my eyes never come back outside. I'm keying inside for, obviously, ball movement. Okay, So I'm keying inside for ball movement, seeing the ball out of my peripheral. That should put my eyes kind of pointed at the tackle. And so as the ball is snapped, I'm striking with my hands, but my eyes are staying on the visual key. The pressure key, the tight end, is going to tell me what I need to know. If the pressure key comes at me and I feel that pressure, I don't need my visual key anymore. I've got to beat the tight end first um, and, and probably beat him to C-gap. We don't get, you might get occasionally, we don't get the straight reach by him very often. Um, and, in fact, the only play in our offense that does that is truck toss, and that defensive end ain't making that play. But um, you know, whether, he's, whether he specials it out or not, he's not making that play. But I would like him to, I still want him to fight that reach. Um, but he'll feel it, and he'll try to fight that reach as best he can. Um, but most of the time, he's going to be getting that stretch, stretch, the um, the rip and run type of thing. We see more of that, uh, and that is going to help him flatten that thing out with with the six tech. Okay, so that's how we use our six tech defensive end. Um, if you have questions, post them into the chat box. I'm going to draw up just a couple of plays so you can see uh, how it works with those. But if you have questions, post them into the chat box, uh, and we will talk about them. All right. So I'm just going to drop a power and a stretch. 
two of our main plays, so at least know a little bit about how they're run. Okay, so we got our six tech end. And if you want to go deeper on this, this is all part of the J, uh, the 425 defense system. You can go to 425defense.com if you want to get a little preview of it. Um, 425defense.com slash podcast, where you can get the, it might be 425defense.com slash YouTube. Either one will work. Um, you can get a free video series that will introduce the 425 system to you. But all of this, we go in depth in the 425 defense system. And again, you can go to 425defense.com to check it out. So we get a power here. Hey, first of all, I don't care what any of these guys on the outside do. They really don't uh, matter that much. Uh, they do in times, but a lot of times they don't. Let's go with a green here. So we're going to get this combo here, okay, on three technique tackle. We will either get an arc release by the tight end, in which case visual key, or we'll get the down block by the tight end trying to come to the A-gap area, okay? We're going to get a block back by the center. We're going to get the kick out block by the H-back. And you wrap to the front side backer by the back side guard. Hinge. Whoever he decides to block. Okay. So. Block reactions for everybody here. The, the nose is going to try to chase. The tackle is going to try to split this double. Okay. If he gets the down block, he's squeezing, 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 and spilling this kick out by the H-back. If he squeezes the tight end, there is no space to get dug out, and he's going to force him to log it. He's going to force him to log it. So what we've done now is force the H back to be outside, which is going to force the R to bounce. we got Chase backside. We've got our wheel backer on the pull call looking for first open window to the inside, and the mic is filling right off the hip of that defensive end, and the strong safety is coming down to force. Okay, That red didn't create a great look for you, but um, if that, and, and then the last component to that is running the alley. Again, running inside out in the alley, it will continue to, and it really should be more like that. Uh, running inside out in the alley. Stay in coverage, stay in coverage. Okay? So that's the power. Let's look at a stretch. And I'm going to leave the H backside just for just for numbers. I'll do questions here in just a second, guys. If you have them, go and put them in the chat box, and we'll talk about them. Um, all right. Now let's take a look. Stretch. So what do we get here? First of all, we get the same thing, blocking the safety or whoever. Probably blocking the safety, but he's probably going to arc. Okay, we're getting that kind of look out of this. We're getting these guys stretch, stretch, stretch. Okay, reaching and running, reaching whoever they can get, comboing up to the mic, all right, trying to run through and take us here. That pressure key goes away, okay? He's going to try to be arcing to the number three out here. That pressure key goes away.
He goes to strike. That pressure key goes away, and the visual key comes at him. He's going to continue to work. And I know I drew him up, but he, that guy's not get, being released. He's strike. Okay, he's coming at me. I'm going to continue to work. He's posting and ripping, and as he does, he's trying to post that outside hand and bring the hips around, and he's trying to run his hips to, again, expand this edge. So look, if, he, if he's a seven and he gets hooked right here, it's a big space. If he's a six and he can expand the edge on that reach block and continue to fight this reach out there, all of a sudden this now becomes bouncing outside because if our Mike Backer can take this run through, it forces it to bounce. It takes away the cutback. That's how we play the stretch uh, out of this, is that we're going to continue to expand. He's going to be down to set the edge. He's running inside out on the alley. And that's how we want that to work. And they'll end up fitting outside, inside, free safety coming to cap it. Strong safety outside and inside, free safety coming to cap it. And that's how we're going to handle the stretch loop. I'll finish the diagram here with that. So that's what we're looking at on the stretch with the six technique defense event. So that's two ways, two different plays that we see. All right, uh, Jason says, do you feel playing a six tech speeds up the read for your safety? It's been my experience that it really cleans up the picture for that guy to insert quickly or play his pass assignment. Um, so we don't, I just want to make sure that I'm clear, we don't read the, the, the tight end. So I don't know if it cleans up as far as the read there, but as far as, because we read the quarterback and that cleaned up the read for us. Um, I don't. I couldn't get a good read off of a tackle or a tight end. They change every week. Sometimes they're sloppy. They're not good enough. So I want to get a clean read. The quarterback gives us a clean read. That's one of the things we do in the 425 system um, is we get a clean read by reading off of that uh, quarterback more than anything else. Um, so I would think it would actually cloud up if you were trying to read the tight end uh, because of the fact that he's going to get punched in the mouth every single time. But the tight end does have to – he can't do some things like um, – for example, so it, it may, and you're saying that you found that, so I definitely think if you found that, it probably does. Um, I don't read the tight end, so I can't say. But it would take away some things like the um, what we call a slam shoot, where he would come down and, and chip the defensive end and then run the shoot route on a play action. Can't do that now. It's he's got to just he can he can punch him and shoot, but it's not going to have the same effect as the slam shoot does uh, when you're reading for, on a seven technique from a safety. So. I can see that maybe being an advantage of it, but, um, you know, that's something to think about there. So, uh, that's six technique defensive end. Again, there's a podcast you can check out the football coaching podcast, search in iTunes for the football coaching podcast, uh, search for, um, also Joe Daniel football quick clinic as well. If you want to know more about the four, two, five defense system, go to four, two, five defense.com and get all the information. Um, this is just PowerPoint get in. I don't use anything special. Um, it's PowerPoint, and it's PowerPoint on MacBook, so it's not that good. It's much better on Windows because I can actually erase individual lines. So uh, the only reason I'm not on Windows tonight is because um, the fan died in my Windows computer. So um, I'm on my normal MacBook. But, uh, yeah, that's that's the 425 defense. Uh, I think it's a great defense. By the way, we also play this out of our 34 defense. We adapted our 425 into a 3-4 front, so if you want to get an odd front, you can still use the six technique, I like it even better because the fact you now get head up all across the board and I can slant him outside and inside. Um, I I don't like playing two gap linebackers in the three four, so our linebackers are still basically one gap. Uh, and if you play the six technique, Sam backer rather than playing him all three by three or something like some people do, we usually line him up in a six technique. We slant everybody inside and it makes a real nice it makes a four two five defense, but gives you some different options and availability, um, a little more flexibility than you might have. Normally, we play a bunch of different fronts. We get into bear fronts, we get into under fronts, we get into G front, Indian front, everything else that's out there. Um, not just an over front, but uh, I love the over front 425 with that six technique. Um, and again, we play cover one, cover three. Um, we teach in the 425 defense system uh, robber, we teach quarters, we teach the split field TCU stuff. We've used it in the past. You can't do all of them at once. So I give you a bunch of options and things that you can do that you might like, uh, and if you like them, great, and if you don't, only use the ones that you need to use. Most years we're going to be in cover one and cover three, and that's it. Um, some years we've done just a split field coverage. I don't think you could do cover one and split field and be good at both of them. It's impossible. So, All right, guys, thanks for being here tonight. 
uh, and watching this, please go ahead and like, subscribe to the channel if you have not before, uh, and share this. And there will be a replay, which I'll put up. I don't know how it works on YouTube. This is the first time I've done it. So it wasn't a disaster. I'm pretty happy with that. Thanks for being here tonight, guys.